Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you, and right now, Lord, Pastor has asked for prayer for, for a youth leader, Lord God, someone that would come and be able to, to uh, witness and set the fire underneath the youth of our community. Lord God, we need that so drastically. We need that so drastically, Lord. So I would ask, Father God, and we all come in agreement, Lord God, for this, that we need some kind of leadership in that area, Father God. How that is going to look, we don't know, but we know that you know. And if you know, we know it's going to work out just fine, Father. So we ask for that in the name of Jesus, Lord God, right now, that that would take place, Father. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, Lord, I'm going to put soon in there, too. We need it, Lord God, as soon as possible. And uh, I know it's all in your timing and your will, Lord God, but that's our desire. That's our desire, Lord God, in our hearts for that to take place, to minister to the youth in our community. It's a desperate need right now. All of these requests, Lord God, and all these praises, Lord God, that we have, have heard today, we do in our hearts, Lord God, we praise you and we thank you, Lord God, for the healing that has taken place, for restoring relationships, Lord God, that has taken place, Lord God, and for our spiritual healing, Lord God, that has taken place, Father God. And Lord God, you know each and every one's needs that we have. And, Father God, I would ask, the Lord God, that you would reach in and, and touch each and every one of them, Father God. Only our needs, Lord God. Only our needs, Father God. And let it be your will if it will glorify you, Father. That's our desire that we have. I would ask that you would touch each and every one of them, Lord God. And, Lord, I just thank you for the new visitors that have come today. I would ask your hand would be upon them during this service. And they would receive, Lord God, your touch today. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. And Father, help us, Lord God, as we, we stand together and collectively we sing, Lord God, and we worship you. Let our heart just flow out of us, Lord God, unto you, Lord. Let you be glorified today like never before. And we give you all the praise and the glory for what you're doing in our lives and in our church, Lord God. And in individuals around us, Lord, help us to do what we need to do to bring glory and honor and praise to you and to help others. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
Father, we do need you more. And the more we know you, the more we know we need you. And so we are so grateful that you are here for us, that you provide a glorious freedom that was won by one war, and that is yours. You alone are worthy to be praised, and you are King of Kings. And we are grateful that we share that glorious freedom with people from every tongue and every nation. And we are grateful to this morning that you have allowed us to have a life in a place where we are free to express that. And we thank you, Jesus, that we are part of something much greater than we see around us. We are part of your kingdom, and I pray, God, this morning that you will teach us more about living as people of your kingdom, honoring your name, lifting you high in the place where you have placed us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, my chickadees, plus all new chickadees, please join me at the front. Now, you know when I say that, what I really mean is kids, right? Not goats. I mean children. And I love it that you guys know exactly where to sit and exactly what to do. How fun is that? Hey, you can be wherever you need to be. Can we make a little bit more room? Just a little bit more room. Oh, my goodness. They keep coming. They keep coming. I am so glad you guys are here this morning, every single one of you. And 
<laughs> and I love that you found your own seat. That's really cool. Well, I wonder if I went around this way, if you all could just say only your name, okay? Can you do that? You can say your name. Holly. Kylo. Galileo. Scarlett. Faith. Hadley. Hudson. Kainan. So I. McKaylin. Betsy. Easter. Ethan. Fantastic. Good to see you here this morning. Well, you know, in church, we talk about a lot of things that are called symbols. They are things that mean something more than they actually say. For example, if I pick this up, out of this vase. What is this? That was pretty easy, right? But it's a symbol. You are exactly right. It is a symbol that means remembrance. Now, not all carnations mean remembrance. Red carnations mean, I have, I have my cue sheet here. Red carnations mean love, how could I forget that? And white carnations mean purity. And pink carnations mean remembrance. And we know that this is just a pink carnation, right? But we have people here who are remembering something very important this morning. So I wonder if... Those people who are here today are grown-ups. If you have had a friend or a family member or someone who is important to you die in a war to protect our country, would you please stand? Anyone who has someone who is special to them, a family member or a friend, Anybody you know? If you have served in a war yourself, would you also please stand? My guess is that some of you had friends who also were important to you. And this morning, we're going to do this really important thing. We're going to do one, two, three. You guys do it with me. One, say it with me. Two, three, It's a beautiful thing as we remember this morning. I'm going to ask you guys to take flowers to those people who were standing, who sat down. Please stand back up. And would you guys take flowers to those people? Thank you. Would you guys take them too? Take one out and then hand it to somebody who is standing up, okay? And then come back. Thank you. I'm glad you came back. Hopefully we've got enough. Oh, my goodness. Some of you might have to break your flowers if we have enough. Okay, Caden, let's see. We don't have quite enough. Yeah, could you maybe break one off for somebody who didn't, who didn't have one? Caden, can you take that to Grandpa? And can you take that to, oh, let's see, who didn't get one yet? That would be good. And come back because I have something for you. Some of you may have to stand up and take two flowers, please. 
stand up and take two flowers, grown-ups, if you um, need more. Okay. I see somebody who is standing right there. Can you give your flower to her? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We've got one. We've got, we've got somebody else who served back there. Can you take yours to Nancy? Okay. Yes, anybody who has served in the military but not been in a war. All right, and for you guys, for you yourselves, oh my goodness, I hope I have enough. Connie, would you pl or Randy, would you play that video, please? So I'm going to call out the name of two of our guests this morning because they are brand new in our church family. Easton Duggar and Ethan Duggar are grandchildren of Randy and Desi, and they are newly adopted into the family and part of our family, too. This was created with a background of amazing grace. And some were called to give their lives in service. And some are called to give their lives to continuing. And all of you are here this morning. And we do celebrate, we do celebrate the remembrance of the sacrifice of those who were called to give their lives. And we never confuse that with the glorious freedom that Christ has given us. They are separate, and yet they are enjoined. They are together in our minds and in our hearts. And as the Lord commanded us to remember, we do remember, and we grieve. And that grief doesn't go away in a day or in an hour, or in a month, or in a year. And all of us are somehow touched by what was given for us so that we might practice responsible freedom. And whenever that freedom is threatened, we get fearful. 
but we need never have fear. God is in control. And so as I was speaking with someone this morning about the flag and the symbolism of the flag, it's very important to me to remember that no flag truly represents the banner that the people of God fly under. And yet, our hearts are touched by those who have sacrificed for us. And we remember that along with Jesus, greater love has no one than those who lay down their lives for a friend. And so it's right and good that we remember. And we remember people who have fallen all around the world who are members of the kingdom of God. And we celebrate their sacrifice on behalf of the nations that they have come to love never forgetting that our first allegiance is to the kingdom of God. Thanks to you, Lord God, who made a way for us to practice our faith, to experience emancipation across, across all personhood. For in you there is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, slave nor free. We are all one in Christ Jesus. And we ask that you help us to practice our patriotism responsibly. And as we give honor to those who have fallen today, we also give the supreme honor to you who are king of all kings and Lord of all lords. And as we prepare our hearts to be givers today, we are grateful for the blessings that allow us to give back. In Jesus' name we pray your blessing upon each and every person who is able to give and those who are not able to give. Help us to be faithfully representing our love for you in giving. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, good morning, everybody. Last week was Pentecost. I may need that later on. Last week was Pentecost, where we celebrated the, the coming of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. The church is one. There is only one church. Now, there are many expressions of that church. We have right here the Church of the Nazarene. We have another church across the tracks there, another church across the track there. We've got the Roman Catholic Church. We've got the Orthodox Church. We've got all kinds of churches, but we are one church, the Church of Jesus Christ. We are universal, which means every tribe and kindred, race, are all represented in the church of Jesus Christ. doesn't matter what country you're in. You are a Christian. You are a member of the one universal church of Jesus Christ. The church is also holy. We are separate. We are separate, which means or we are to becoming more and more Christ-like, which our Christ-likeness, our growing Christ-likeness, separates us from the world around us. And we are apostolic which means that we believe in the teachings that go back to the apostles. The song that Kim played for the offertory, I believe in God the Father, I believe in the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the three in one. That is apostolic teaching. Let's uh, read our scripture for this morning, okay? Should be coming up here. This is in Isaiah chapter 6. And we're reading the first eight verses. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, the eternal God, seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. Two wings covered their face, two wings covered their feet, and two wings by which they were flying. And they were calling out to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Almighty God. The Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the sound of their voices, at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am, a, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the eternal God, the Lord God Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Let's pray. Gracious Father, loving God, be with us this morning. 
that we hear your voice. That we hear your voice. And that our hearts are open to what you're speaking to us as you show us yourself. And you let us know what you would have us do. Pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. Say, last week was Pentecost. This week for the United States is Memorial Day. And when I think of Memorial Day, one of the thing that comes to me the most, besides the Indy 500 and, you know, but is the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Great, great piece of music. Mine eyes have seen the color of the glory of the Lord. He is tramping out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. That song was written in the Civil War. And after the Civil War is when Memorial Day was started to honor the dead of both the North and South. And since it has been, because we have had many wars since then, to honor all of those who have fallen for the ideals of our country. We are pretty familiar with the first verse of the battle hymn. It's the last verse that always ties In the beauty of the lily, Christ was born across the sea with the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free. While God, <laughs> excuse me, while God is marching on. That is a great sentiment. Let's give our lives to make others free. And where is it that we can be to encounter that transforming power of Jesus Christ? Right here. Right here in the church. See, why are we here? Some of us come out of habit. I know for quite a few years, Sunday morning came around, if I wasn't in church, it was like, whoa, what have I done wrong? For many of us, it has been a habit, is a habit. For others, we come to church to be with friends, people we know. Somebody we haven't seen since last week, we get together and we have a nice time together. We have coffee before and after the service. And we come together. Many people come together because we love the music. The worship in music is extremely powerful. But how many of us in our hearts of hearts come to church to meet God? How many of us come to church with the expectation that Isaiah says here, I saw the Lord. It's not every day that Isaiah got a vision of the Lord like that. But if we're not expecting it, not searching for it, would we miss it? God's appearance to us is not always as dramatic as 
Isaiah describes there, high and lifted up with seraphim flying, you know, and things. But every day when we are in church or every day when we are exploring God's word at our time together, your time together, whether it's just reading a, a couple of verses or chapters, is an opportunity for us to see the Lord. What is the result of our seeing the Lord? Isaiah said, woe is me. Because he saw himself as he truly is, or as he truly was, a man of unclean lips, living amongst the people of unclean lips. See, when we come face to face with God, through his word, through our experience together as the people of God in worship, We should be, I should be, confronted with who I really am, face to face to God. And I should have the willingness to say, God, I'm not there yet. I'm not there. I need the transformation that you can give me, that you can cause in my life so that I can be a little bit more like Jesus today than I was yesterday. And as I am transformed through the power of the Holy Spirit working in my life, I am able to influence others. Sometimes through words, sometimes through actions, sometimes the change they can see. But that transforming power that the battle hymn talks about you know, in Christ's bosom, is available to each and every one of us as we meet God, as we meet Jesus. And does God ever say, I need you to do something? That's kind of scary, isn't it? That the Almighty God would have something for me, for you, to do. What God calls me to do may be completely different than what God calls you to do. But the call of God is one of holiness, that we are to represent him in whatever area he calls you to do, whatever area he calls me to do, that I, in doing that, am to reflect him. I see a lot of stuff today of people who name the name of Christ and I see what they do. And I say, that's not Jesus. That's not Jesus. If I am not loving my neighbors myself, if I am not loving the person who I disagree with, to the you know, person I just maybe just totally despise. If I'm not loving that person as myself, if I'm not loving as God loves them, then I am not doing what God has asked me to do. 
Now, loving doesn't mean you have to agree. Doesn't mean you have to approve. But it does mean we have to treat people as Jesus would treat them. See, we, as the church, have the call to transform the world. And we do that by being transformed and by living lives that reflect that transformation, by living lives that reflect Jesus to the world around us. And that is hard. <laughs> that is hard because we sometimes confuse things together. But the way we help sort things out is to dig into the Word and know more and more who Jesus is. Rely on the Spirit of God to enlighten me, enlighten you about how I can live more like Jesus. Let's think about that, okay? Let's think about that. And think about what the prophet Isaiah said as he came face to face with the Lord. Woe is me. As I continue my journey as a Christian, I find that there's more and more I don't know. I've been studying the Bible for a long time. I teach theology. And the more I've learned about who God is, the more I learn about who Jesus is, the more I know I don't know very much. And I need to have God show me more what it means to be his child. As we are contemplating what it means to be a member of God's church, the church of Jesus Christ, and think about who we are face to face to, with God. Let's take a moment in silence and prayer as we prepare for communion this morning. We are taught by the Apostle Paul that we should not take the Lord's Supper in vain or un in an unworthy manner. What we need to do, what I need to do, is spend some time saying, Lord, Where do I need to be transformed today? And then, Lord, give me the power to work, to bring that transformation about in my life. Let's spend a, a moment in silence together as we search our hearts.
Lord, thank you for your transforming power. Thank you for the witness of your spirit in our lives which guides us in how we are to be transformed. And as we take the elements, the bread and the cup, this morning, may each of us renew our commitment to you to be a member of your church, your one universal, holy, apostolic church. That is a transforming power in the world to show Jesus to the world. Pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. The night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Take, eat every one of you and do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner after cup, after supper, he took the cup and having given thanks, he said, this cup is a new covenant, my blood, which is shed for you. Take, drink, all of you. For as often as you take this bread, eat this bread and take this cup, you remember the Lord's death for you. The death that makes us holy, that saves us. As you were led, come down the center aisle, take the bread and the cup, and return to your seat. bread that we break together is Christ's body broken for you, for me. And the cup of blessing that we share together is the blood of the new covenant that makes it so that we can have the right to go directly before God. Let's eat together. Communion that we share together is a symbol of our faith that we share. Thanks be to God. Stand with me for a blessing. Today, may you be blessed with remembrance and blessed with an understanding of how God is working in your life and blessed with the opportunity to share your faith with others. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord today. Thanks be to God. Amen.